quite a bit of drag, but it's so fine. have quite a nice collection of invertebrates in there. A lot deeper around the other side. In fact, I can get just about all the net. Under Big the difference water. in catch rate between the two sides of the dam. Obvious difference is the depth. Wash that off when hanging out to dry. easily in the melee. Okay, so let's have a look what we've got. I hope you can see this. Sorry about the quality of the film, but uh, David said he was busy this week. Yeah. Let's have a Apparently you can't identify them by the female. That's a female. You can see there, that's the egg, the egg sac. It's quite extended. So that's a female. There's a lot of mud in here. Oh, here's another one. This one looks a bit smaller. I don't know if there's any sexual dimorphism in size. Now that one, it's either a juvenile or it could potentially be a male. Oh, that's a nice big one. Oh, but that's a female. You can quite clearly see the egg sac on that. You can see it pulsing away, all the legs pulsing away in there. Gonopore is located right at the back. Look at the length of the antennae. Look at that. That's pretty amazing. I don't know if you can see the antennae or not, I don't even know where my camera angle is. David, he's always busy when you need I'm pretty sure I caught more than that. Now, there you go, there's another one. There could be a preponderance of uh, females, for all I know. That's another female. I'll chuck the tadpoles back, I just want to look at the invertebrates. Yeah, maybe that's all. Well, there's potentially one male there. Snails, back swimmers. Boatman. Little crustaceans, bivalve crustaceans. All sorts of creatures. That one there's a boatman. That's a back swimmer. That's a pretty big back swimmer. I'll put them in before they roast. Beautiful. I'll chuck them on the barbie.
surface area and I can get a little bit further out. It's interesting, uh, I, caught, I caught females yesterday, they're all on the side here. And I caught a few, but this morning I haven't caught any. It might still be a bit early and the temperature hasn't come up enough. I'm not sure what's going on there. let's have a look and see what we've got hasn't been a big catch this morning I was hoping to get a few more females but I'm getting a I've picked up a lot of tadpoles and there's a uh, probably going to be a damselfly larvae right there that, that's a predator could potentially even prey on the fairy shrimp the tadpoles will be Near Betrakas Pictus, the painted frog. It's an inland, mainly inland burrowing species. They take advantage of ephemeral water like this. There's another one. And they haven't got long. This water body will probably now only last, I don't know, maybe four or five weeks at the most. It's, uh, there's one there, fairy shrimp. Get rid of the tadpole. Now that. Potentially, it looks to me like it might be a male. You can see it. It does look like a, a male because I can't see. There's no brood sac. If it was a female, it would have a large brood sac just about here. Yeah, that's definitely a male. I can see by the antennae on the front. Excellent. Another teddy. Better grow fast, tadpole, the water's running out. As the water level gets down, their growth rate will probably accelerate. That one's getting its, its legs. It's got its back legs, front ones are almost coming through. So that one's not far off. A lot of caddis fly, larvae. They build these little stick-like objects and they live inside of them. Be like a hermit crab. But they actually, oh there's two. Now the males do appear to be smaller than the females. I've seen the females in here up to about 60 millimeters. They're quite a large species. And probably in fact one of the largest species of fairy shrimp. Let's get rid of these tadpoles. A couple more tads. Let's have a quick look see if there's anything else I can show you. It's a bit early and Normally by now, I shouldn't say by now, but normally when I collect in that area, which I've done a couple of times before in the last few days, there's normally a lot of activity, but there's not much today. And it's just a time. I'm here a lot earlier today. I'm trying to avoid that harsh desert sun. Even though it's only meant to be about 30 today. Out here, when you're standing out in the sun, there's, a, there's that fairy shrimp. When you're standing out in the sun, it's quite hot and um, <laughs> blinding to say the least. It's that bright. All right, I'll put these into fresh water. It's a clear water, and I'll I'll show you what they look like in clear water. As soon as you have a water body like this, organisms just come in from everywhere. Some of them are already here. Some of them have eggs that are dried up, which is the case with fairy shrimp. The eggs have to go through a, a drying phase, otherwise they won't hatch. So they actually completely dry out. They remain in the dirt. And then when it rains, a certain percentage of them will hatch. Not all of them. It's a sort of an evolutionary hedge bedding in that if they all hatched out at the same time and there wasn't enough rain to get them through their developmental stage and the population would be wiped out. Well, here we have our fairy shrimps in clear enough water to be able to see them. 
as I'll explain to you a little bit about them. That one's a female. You can see that it's a female by the brood pouch right there. That section is male. This is the male. He doesn't have the brood pouch. It's a in this case also the male is quite a bit smaller. All the males I found, uh, I think I found three in total um, and maybe half a dozen females. All the males were about that size and all the females were roughly about this size. The females varied a little bit from about say 45 millimeters. One of them was quite large at about 60 millimeters. And the males are um, you know, roughly half less than half lengthwise, body wise they're a lot less than mass and whatnot. Um, so I don't know whether or not these males are young um, or not. I've been through the key on this group of animals. Uh, Branchinella or Branchinella is the genus. There are I think around about 39 species so far described in Australia, something like that. And it's in the 30s, I think it's 39. Uh, this one here, in fact, is Australiensis, which is the type species for the genus. It's found all over Australia and it's meant to be relatively common. It's not what you'd call a perfect match. The male, um, the part that you look for, the males are the way the species are determined. If you look at the face of this male, you might be able to see it there. There's like two like, like tusks at the front. Well, they're actually modified antennae. So that's the same antennae. It's homologous to these large antennae on the female here. Um, as with all crustaceans, there are two pairs of antennae. You can't see the first pair of antennae on these. You can only see the second pair. Uh, you, have to, you have to use the microscope. They're very, very clear. And in this species, relatively short, the first, the first pair of antennae. So what they do is they swim upside down um, and these little legs, they're more or less like legs, the thoracic appendages, uh, thoracopods is one name for them, and they're beating. They rhythmically beat. They're a complex organ. They have a number of structures on them and they're covered in cilia, uh, not cilia, ceti, tiny fine hairs called ceti. Um, and what that does is they beat and they filter particles. Microparticles are filtered towards the mouth, towards the front end, uh, and, um, and then they're taken up into the digestive system. So such particles as you know, like algae and protozoans and, and dirt particles uh, which have bacteria on them. So all the organic matter is digested Now these guys, these guys live in, live in uh, ephemeral water, which means they, they live in water bodies which don't last all that long. The, the water body will dry up. And as I said earlier in the, in the video, that um, the eggs have to actually go through a drying phase. Otherwise they won't, they won't hatch again. So each, each period of rain is one generation because the whole generation in the pond die and just leave their eggs. And then when it rains again, the water, the water is back in the pond again, you have the next generation. So these eggs lie dormant in the dust. They can be in the dust for years and uh, they dry out completely. They totally desiccate. And for some strange reason, they uh, they remain viable, which is a very odd thing, considering that they're in the top layers of the crust of the, of the pond, and the temperature there will be absolutely incredible. I mean, ground temperatures out here in the summer will be at least 60 degrees Celsius. So that's a fairly high temperature to not have denaturing of DNA going on. So I, how they do it, I don't know. But it's a very, very interesting animal. Um, quite a few species in Australia and uh, very interesting to look at and interesting to find. So thanks for listening.